Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> my name is Dorothea. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I like to finish up with Christianity. And then we can start on Saturday with Native Americans, the different Indian tribes in America and the world. Okay? So. I hope everybody is okay, especially those people who right now have to deal with conflicts all over the world. I send out love to everyone and hope that things will become better and will be resolved soon. Okay? So, let me start. I like to use Christianity once more and today I like to talk a little bit about the crucifixion not only of Jesus Christ but the cru crucifixion as a means to deal with all kinds of people during mainly the Roman Empire but not only it is done in Roman culture, as we will find out with my video today. Okay, so let me start. Christianity is forever connected to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So that is why I want to make this video today to bring that again to the attention. In Roman times crucifixion was applied to slaves, disgraced soldiers, Christians and foreigners and very rarely even to Roman citizens. The Romans perfected crucifixion for 500 years until it was abolished by Constantine the first in the first century. Crucifixion is seen as a horrible form of death because the crucified victim is forced to move up and down the cross a distance of about 12 inches in order to breathe. The process of respiration caused excruciating pain to the person being crucified and this pain was mixed with the absolute terror of asphyxiation. Alone 6,000 captured slaves were executed by Roman soldiers after the revolt led by the gladiator Spartacus in the 1st century BC. In order for a quicker death to occur, Roman soldiers broke the person's legs so they could no longer push themselves up and all the body weight would be hanging on the arms. In Jesus' case, he was already dead when the time came to break his legs. So written in John 19.33. When the soldier found Jesus dead, they pierced his side to assure that he was dead. In doing this, piercing his side, Blood and water came out, referring to the watery fluid surrounding the heart and lungs. Crosses used for crucifixion were used and reused over and over again, making it a never-ending supply of wood, and this wood was mainly pine wood. While Jesus was nailed to the cross, this is highly unlikely, 
without other methods keeping a body for hours attached to a cross. Usually the person to be crucified was with their hands and feet stretched out at full length in an erect posture. In this posture they were to remain until death. Everything they wished to eat was given to them usually and this just the giving of food when they wish to get it this prolonged the suffering and the misery crucifixion was a method of capital capital punishment also and now it comes not only the romans did it but it was also done by the persians the Seleucids, the Cartesians, and of course, Romans from about the 6th century BCE to the 4th century CE. According to scripture, Saint Peter was crucified upside down because he felt unworthy to die in the same manner as Jesus Christ. Christianity unfortunately has a long list of violence during history. They themselves, the Christians, didn't always do nice things. So they were involved in holy wars, in crusades, and they also killed many people in wars, in inquisitions, in Christian terrorism, in forced conversions, in the support of slavery, in the violence against the Jews, and also in domestic violence. Today, there are still crucifixions imposed by courts in Saudi Arabia. Their crucifixion takes place after the beheading, says Amnesty International, which campaigns against all forms of capital punishment. While Roman religion was not intolerant at first, there were all kinds of gods, such as Saturn, in North Africa, Jehovah among the Jews, Greek gods, Roman gods, and so forth, because countless, countless gods and goddesses were worshipped in the Greco Roman world. This toleration of religious multicultural beliefs shifted in the early second century when Christians became a focal point of persecutions. Alone to be said or named, Christian was highly dangerous, often ending in a death warrant. Persecution did not start with Roman authorities because we already read in the New Testament about, read in the New Testament, about killings between Jews and early Christians, which is called fratricide, meaning the killing of brothers, murdering your brother, or killing members of your own group. Early Christianity had a difficult start. Christianity began as a despised, illicit, religious sect and endured 300 years of hostility to finally emerge as the dominant force in the Roman Empire. Early Christians followed the concept of martyrdom from the Jewish legacy 
of suffering portrayed by the martyrdom by the Maccabees, which rather died than renunciate Israel. So be written down in the fourth book of the Maccabees. And Christians, they followed such martyrdom as a form to be close to Jesus who suffered on the cross. Today, Christians are the most persecuted group in the world. A report commissioned by British Foreign Secretary concludes that anti-Christian persecution is nearing genocidal levels. While one third of the world suffers from religious persecution, Christians are the most persecuted of religious groups at a risk of disappearing. This report by British Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt is based on the extent of global anti-Christian persecution. Astonishingly, for me, when I googled persecution of Christians to aid me with regards to early Christianity and what I found out stunned me. Here I found that, quote, persecutions of Christians around the world increased during the COVID pandemic, pandemic with followers being refused aid in many countries, authoritarian governments stepping up surveillance and Islamic militants exploiting the crisis, a report says, quote, end. The report states further that 340 million Christians, one in eight, face high levels of persecutions and discriminations because of their faith, according to the 2021 World Watch List. It also says that there was a 60% increase over the previous year in the number of Christians killed for their faith. And more than 9 out of 10 of the global total of 4,761 deaths were alone in Africa. David Landrum, the head advocacy for Open Doors UK and Ireland, said that this should disturb us all. Quote, Freedom of religion is what underpins many other human rights and civil liberties. Oppressive governments know this and they are exploiting the pandemic crisis to turn the screw on Christians. The report says that Christians in numerous countries in Africa and Asia have been refused COVID-related aid, so decided by officials of governments, but more often by village heads or committees. In Kaduna, which is in Nigeria, families from several villages reported receiving one-sixth of the rations that Muslim families received. So, that is ending Christianity today and with what I said here in this video, I guess we are far away from world peace in all kinds of different levels of society. I was really shocked, I have to say, by even the way the world does things during a pandemic and how they decide whose life is worth being saved and whose life is not worth being saved. 
I thought that by now we would have a little bit more, well, a better way of taking care of everything and everyone. But the new, the new war with Russia going into the Ukraine, doing what they are doing, I think we are long, we are far away from world peace and from coming to a consensus that wars are really not doing anything but destroy people's lives and countries and everything that was worth living for. So I hope that over time we humans find a way to better tolerate others, their way of thinking, their way of living, and that we will find a way to live and let live, and also to support each other, because we all, we all are human beings, we all have families we love, we all like to get through life in a decent way, have enough to eat, have a roof over the head, have the right to see a doctor if we are sick, things like that. So we all have to work together, I think, more closely to achieve this goal. I think it will take a long time until this is done, but we should never give up the hope that we humans are able to get to the point where we all finally understand what is at stake, okay? Because there is no sense in fighting wars and there is no sense in, in uh, atomic warfare and there is no sense in poisoning each other by putting chemicals in water, supplies or whatever people think of to come out a winner because I don't think there is a winner in such a conflict. Okay, so let's all hope that we humans show sense, show that we are intelligent enough to solve all problems that are at stake, that we are intelligent enough to finally conclude that we all have to live together and we better work towards peace so everybody has a decent life here on earth. Okay, this is what I hope for the day. So on Saturday, I start with medicine man and things like that. So I hope I see some of you Saturday. Have all a wonderful day today and stay positive, stay optimistic and work towards peace on earth. We all can contribute to it by, in, by, by um, understanding our neighbors. It always starts in a little group. It starts in our own neighborhood, in our own families and then it spreads out into a wider kind of context, okay? So let's start in our neighborhood, in our families, to be peaceful and good to each other, and then we hope that this also becomes a common behavior in the world, okay? So love to you all, and I see you on Saturday. Goodbye.